The water is boiling, which is a very good thing because it's early in the morning, 0500, and we have to pack up camp. This cannot be achieved without good coffee. We're going to Noss up this morning, initially, and then a long drive up to Gnu's Gnu's in the northern part of the Khalakhadi. It's about 320 k's or so, which we think is going to take us about 12 hours. Far less well known than the spectacular spectacle of a wildebeest crossing of the Mara River is this. The once in a millennium extravaganza that is the great Hemsbok fording. The mighty scimitar horned beasts prevaricate, trying to find the chutzpah to take the plunge. Terrified at the four inch puddle created by the sustained deluge. <gasps> One braves the shallows. Any moment a desert leviathan may reach out and grab it, or a sand serpent drag it neath the surface. Phew! That brave one survives to tell the tale. Could drowning be the fear? No. It is surely the unfamiliarity of mud betwixt the cloven hoofs. Once this phobia is conquered, a frolicking the oryx will go, to and fro across the rapidly evaporating Kalahari puddle the pale chanting goshawk. When seen in company with a honey badger, action is in the offing. This pale chanting goshawk is sitting on a branch on its own. Nigel Nomates, if you like. We came up a little short of our projected target today by about 240 kilometers. We have stopped at Nossop Rest Camp, where there are a number of children shouting at each other, playing with the tennis ball. Others have been in the swimming pool, no doubt relieving themselves therein. And you might ask yourself why we have stopped here. Well, the reason is we didn't know if we would make it to Gnu's Gnu's on time. And on account of the fact that our fridge had defrosted absolutely everything, and was refusing to get cold and the guidance of the solar panels and because we needed to charge all of our batteries we thought you know what we'll stay here for the night and so that's where we find ourselves despite the children i am about to engage in my evening toilet which consists of brushing my teeth and having a shower Unfortunately, my wife, who has lived in the bush for some time, left the bathroom light on. Now, with a once-in-a-two-decade rainfall that the Kalahari has experienced over the last little while, there has been a great and enthusiastic explosion of bug life. Now, when I say bug, I do mean of the order Hemiptera. If you take a look at these fellows, you'll see that they are definitely bugs and they are producing a substance that not only burns the skin but smells like coriander gone bad. Oh, there's one in my eye. Oh. It's been quite a morning so far. We started off nice and relaxed with a cup of coffee and a reed rain gently pitter pattering down then we started packing up my wife doing an excellent job and then the only thing left to do was to hitch the trailer and put some water in it and i tried to start the car and the battery was dead now we don't know why this has happened which is the most terrifying part of what's about to occur because we're about to head up here to Gnu's Gnu's which is some distance from here. Watch the water there. And we don't know if the battery is uh, unhealthy or if my dear wife left something on yesterday. So it's going to be an interesting couple of days. We might be there forever. There's a bat-eared fox. 300 miles away, can't turn the car off, so unfortunately it's going to be shaky. At least we have seen a 
their little batty ears sticking out of the grass. My wife is shooting this particular shot. We are unable to start the car. And that means that the trip is going to come to a premature end because we cannot go into Botswana with the current battery situation like it is. It doesn't seem to be charging, which is a big problem. Now we must wait for rescue. Let's wait for somebody to come along here and uh, allow us to jump or start the car. This person here is going to help us. We've come back to Nossop full of hope that our battery problems were solved, but they are not. And we thought we might replace the car battery with the battery from the trailer, but it looks like the terminals are totally different sizes, which means that won't be possible. So we have a number of funny options, uh, which I shan't bore you with, but basically you can hear from my voice that I'm feeling greatly depressed. Now we will go and find a mechanic. Put it on here. You think you can do that? Yeah. Maybe let I check if I have some the size okay. of but we can make a plan. Alright. Thank you. Well, this chap says he thinks he can help us. So if we can make this thing get onto the car and start, then we'll go for it. I guess. Let's see what happens. A rather fascinating update is that uh, we changed the battery out of the trailer, put it in the car, did what is known as a bush mechanics job, uh, fixed it, I think it's okay, started the car and we've decided to chance it back into Botswana today. So that's what we're going to do. We stupidly went online briefly while we were at Nossop. Uh, the world's gone mad. COVID-19 has totally taken over the human narrative right now and so we're very pleased to be out here and the choice to carry on rather than go back home was a very easy one. When filming with a BBC-sized budget, one can take one's footage to the studio afterwards and add what is known as Foley. We are operating on a shoestring and so must add Foley in the field. We've had our first bit of luck for the day, and that is that we found a track heading where logically there should have been one from the main road to Gnu's Gnu's Camp Number One. And here we are. As you can see, the facilities at this camp are, shall we say, sparse to be kind. We will not do the obligatory trip to the uh, thunderbox. I nearly said shitbox, but I can't say that, so thunderbox, because there isn't one. And so my wife is going to have to avail herself of the bush, as of course will I. But this is Gnu's Gnu's campsite number one. The sun should go down, by my reckoning, over there. Mm -hmm. North is that way, east is that way, and I think what we'll probably do is put our tent underneath this tree. We need to ask ourselves the question, do we want a view of the sunset or a view of the sunrise? Set. I think we'll go with set, yes, good idea, because we'll be out on the road during sunrise.
Marvelous. Swim free, sing free, be free. Spring brings all things new things. Sound sights, fresh lights, and I might just be. First meerkats of the trip. They are about 500 meters away, and we don't think we can get closer. But a meerkat, quintessential Kalahari creature. A silhouette, not great light. To our amazement, Alana Falcon was playing Bop the meerkat, or try to grab the meerkat, tear it to pieces and eat it for breakfast. Whatever it was, the meerkats didn't like the game. Hey. The brave little herpestids were undeterred, refusing uh, to be bopped. an overheated engine in the middle of the Kalahari in a place like this where no one will come for days is dangerous. <laughs> 